Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gobble in sport. We say the things on here that nobody dares say. Uh, can I just give a big shout out to Porky's International? Uh, today we're joined by James. How are you doing, James? You all right? I'm, I'm all right, mate. How are you? All right. I just took this in because, you know, I ended up getting robbed on here, ain't we? Now. <laughs> New <Orleans laughs> people, <coming up. laughs> people creeping in the gaff and all that, yeah. Yeah, I wish they would, mate. I wish they would. I'd, you know, I'd have to defend me some, wouldn't I? Yeah. You yeah. want to um, you want to stick to how I'm living, mate, because I can't climb ladders and things. I've still got the same sort of decoration in the house that, I, you know, 2013, mate. Flowers on the wall, all sorts. I look poor, so no one's coming around and robbing me. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, well... It's been a busy day. The White Rhino's back. He's on Josh Wales' show. Wee. 23rd of November. The... I'm going to rush out and get a ticket for that. Oh, God, I can't wait. Against TBA. Thomas Bogdan Abramovich. <laughs> he pops up everywhere, doesn't he? Well, he's knocked back Nicky Campbell, uh, Henry Armstrong, Harry Armstrong, sorry, and Peter Naylor on a big Ron show. Oh. In eight rounders right. uh, to go on a Barnsley show in a four rounder. So I don't know where he's really at. He's having to match himself a paper opponent and that. Do you think he's doing it all wrong? Uh, I do, yeah. Like if you're paying for your own opponent and all that, like you've got to be motivated, haven't you? And, you know, if, I mean, I'm a bit, I can talk. Look at me. You know what I mean? I've got a body like a bag of milk, but White Rhino, he's not a big, he's not a big lover of training, is he? I think. If you're willing to sacrifice your own money and, you know, pay your opponent, you've got to be willing to put in the hours. So, I mean, I don't know if you've spoken to him, Porky, but, uh, nah, you know. Him, huh? No, I mean, where, where is he at? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Maybe someone who watches us can uh, shed light on that. But I can't really see him being any uh, in any big fights. You know what I mean? He's he's had his time in the sun, hasn't he? Um Feel for maybe, him in a way, maybe. though, do you? Do you feel feel for him yeah. in a way that he's been kind of like used and abused by the by the industry? Yeah, but let's all listen to Chris Eubank. Do you know what I mean? There's lessons to be learned, isn't there? Um, yeah. And we know, uh, the majority of the viewers know, that you know that's what boxing promoters do. They spit you out, uh, well, chew you up, they spit you out. Chris Eubank Sr. had it right in the early 90s, didn't he? And... He was turning around and saying like it was an abusive business. So I, I do feel for him. He's a likable bloke. Um, he's squeezed far more out of his career than someone else maybe of the same level of ability would have done because he's likable. Um, so really, yeah, I feel for him. I've also, I had quite a bad gambling addiction a few years ago. So I can relate to him. Do you know what I mean? Um, I know he'd done about 16 grand or something like that, didn't he? So... Yeah, I mean, he, he is. He's the every man on the street. But I can't help but think, like, I get a bit annoyed, Porky, because, like I've said before, I've got cerebral palsy. I'm a wheelchair user, right? And I would give anything that I had to be in his position with, you know, the opportunity to basically have, have been wrong paying for him and, you know, as he was, and just saying, look, your job is to turn up and train. If I had me legs and God was courteous enough to give me the opportunity to fight... I'd be doing all the things that he isn't doing. So sometimes it is a bit, it sticks in your throat a little bit. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I wish him all the best. And I do hope that he goes up against uh, Johnny Fisher at some point and puts an end to all that Bosch crap that, you know, everyone keeps doing because it's annoying, isn't it? How can you say that about a fellow Essex geezer? Uh, well, because I'm a, I'm a northerner, aren't I? I've been up here 20 years this month. Uh, when oh, you start really? liking black pudding, that's it, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You're not a real so, northerner, mate. Well, I can talk. I can talk like one. I'm not going to disgrace myself by doing an impression. You watch? But, Cor yeah. Hey. You watch Cora? No, I don't watch. I don't really watch telly anymore. It's all shy, isn't it? I've got Netflix and all that. Um, my son's a northerner. It's quite funny. Like when I was trying to teach him to read, I say bucket and he says bucket, and we're both looking at each other like, "What the hell? What, what are you talking about?" So, yeah, it's fun times in there, Ralph, so I want to tell you. Um, yeah, so, I know I am a real, I am a real Northern. I can't, Paul. He was Lennox Lewis English. 
Not born here, so he's English, isn't he? Yeah, well, well, I weren't born up here, actually, so that, there's your point. Touche, Jamie's talking crap. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, where do you think he went wrong for White Rhino, then? Do you think when he refused the Dubar fight, you think he never got over that? Um... No, I just think it went wrong. His his attitude, his attitude is where it went wrong. Do you know what I mean? It, again, he's had a lot, and I don't just want to slate him, but I'm very, like I've said, I'm quite jealous of people that got these opportunities because unfortunately they weren't afforded to me. So I just think if you've been given those opportunities coming from your background, you know he hasn't, he didn't have the starry, starry eyed amateur career, the the glittering sort of, you know. You've already got a, a golden road before you even start, did he? But he was given all these opportunities by Eddie because Eddie seemed to like him. And, and you know, given given the time, I think he's just let himself down. I think that's where it went wrong. And I think it's probably come about from a, a sparring partner mentality, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? He's, he's sparred everybody and he's allowed himself to get beaten up in the gym. I don't think that helps either. Getting bloody CTE before you've even entered... A meaningful fight. So, yeah. I, I, again, you know, I've never met. I've never met uh, Dave Allen. So, no disrespect. I'd love to sit and have a cup of tea with him, but I think even he knows if he, you know, searches his soul, he will know he's not giving it his all. And let's hope his latest sort of comeback, he's willing to put put the best in, and um, we'll see the best of him because. You know, as you're always saying, you, you've seen a lot more of him than I have. You're always talking about he's, you know, he's got potential. Well, let's let's really see it. Do you know what I mean? Well, and not just because of his, his name and his likable character. In my opinion, it's been knocked out of him now, inspiring and in the fact that he's been, he's took his gamble, Danny. Like he used to be a gambler. I remember when he fought Louis Ortiz and he went up to the casino in a suit and done all his doing. It's not a. Yeah. It's not good, like, but if you're willing to roll the dice like that in your life, you'll roll the dice in the ring. Now, if you're pestering Eddie Earn for a Lewis Ortiz fight, thinking you can get it mixed that way, I think that you're a bit daft, really, because shouldn't somebody who's only had double digit fights, and I think he'd only been beat by uh, Dylan White, I think he were 9 1 and 1 when he fought Ortiz. Why would you? Mm. Want to go fight Louis Sources when you've got all your career ahead of you to rebuild? Why would you just, why would you go from there to jump up by all that when you can build up to that and do it correctly? Uh, like Clinton Woods, when he got beat against Dave Starry, they went again, didn't they? They didn't just try and do mm. what David did, they, they regrouped and moved up a weight division to light heavyweight, and he ended up, you know, winning area English, British Commonwealth, European, and whatnot, didn't he? And and then he went on to world title. Clinton Woods held a world title belt the same length of time that Mike Tyson held one. You know the the first reign of terror. So yeah, I, I think David tried to gamble with his career and thought everybody were his pal. Eddie and they were his arm around him. You're part of the matchroom family. You're always welcome at these shows. Eddie does that to disarm you. Now when he got the Debar offer. He went running back to Eddie to tell him about that. Why? I know I keep going on about this, but why the would you do that when you don't have a deal with Eddie? Just take the debarment, yeah. which were a big package offer. Why would you do that? I don't. I don't get that. I don't get no. that. And and it's got it got away from him then, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, true friends. You know, what I mean, he would have retained him, wouldn't he? He would have. No matter what. what? He would have kept hold of him no matter what. He wouldn't have let him go if he was his friend, but. Money become money comes before everything in boxing, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's a business, so yeah. you know it, it shows really. Yeah, he's he's a very likable bloke, Dave, and I think you know it's all right to be liked, but maybe he's being a bit naive. Um, and you've just shown there that you're on the same page as me in terms of Dave. He's had it knocked out of him, you know, that ambition and and all of that. Maybe against Ortiz, and you know, he'd already sort of subconsciously cashed out, and he just said, you know. I can't really. Maybe I can't compete. Maybe he knew in his mind he didn't have the mentality. Yeah, but he could have competed if he'd have brought his son up to that level with the correct fights. But you can't just yeah. see them people get damaged like that. His mouth were opening up like that. I mean, you don't come back confidence to though. like that, do you? No, it's confidence, though, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. Maybe subconsciously he wasn't as confident as the outward 
you know what I mean? The the mouth is the mouth's talking and the mouth's you know coming across confident and your big laugh and everybody likes you. But I know from my own experience, do you know what I mean? Um, a lot of that is insecurity. If you're the clown and you're making people laugh, a lot of the time you're insecure. And he was probably insecure about his own ability because he knew he weren't putting the work in. Do you know what I mean? So he could have done what you've said there, but he weren't willing at the time to put the work in. He was he was playing dice. He was doing whatever he was doing at the casino, and that took precedence. And as someone who used to gamble, that does. It takes up all your time. It's, it's horrible. It's like any other addiction. Do you know what I mean? You can It just consumes you. So boxing wouldn't have been at the forefront of his mind. He would have just been sitting there going, right, how can I chase back all this money that I've lost? Do you know what I mean? 16 grand is, is the figure that I heard, and that's quite a chunk, isn't it? So, we'll you know, I know we'll exactly how he would have been. It's just in the main... Whoa, hang on a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because you've got more fucking Go rabbit than that Sainsbury's you, right? Who told you it was 16 grand? But, well, that's what's in the mainstream, isn't it? Oh, well... I've heard that figure thrown about in the mainstream. Well, I heard 12 anyway. So. But either yeah. way, either way, it's stupid, isn't it? It's it is. James, isn't it? it is, and it's a toxic mentality. And I love the fact that you said more rabbit than Sainsbury's. I'm a big uh, Chaz and Dave fan, probably enough. <laughs> you fucking... Are you taking piss out of me, you now? No, 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 I love it. We'll get a bit of uh, There Ain't No Pleasing You on, mate. I mean, none loves that. <laughs> Right, okay. Well, we wish right, right, White Rhino all the best, but is this where he's at in his career now? Paying to fight on shows in yeah. Barnsley? Yep. Paying for Evidently. Yeah. Hopefully he can pull himself out of that, and but I can't see it. I think his head would have already gone. Do you know what I mean? He's taken too many beatings, and every time you... I mean, I've listened to him on his YouTube channel quite recently, and he's speaking quite well, but when he gets in the ring, he's he's sort of slurring again, and it's not it's not. I mean, he's not as bad as Chisora, is he? But it, it don't look good. I'd just stay away from the ring. Carry on managing fighters. He seems to be all right at that, and um, yeah, earn a living that way. Well, uh, I don't know what to say really, but I just feel for him having to pay to fight on shows, and it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I spoke to Peter DeFreitas about this the other day. And he was really off what the fighters were getting 30 years ago for four rounders at your call. Four rounders at your call. And I was I were calculating it in my head thinking, I know what people were getting for IBO internationals and uh, trinket belt money and Commonwealth uh, defences and British title defences when I were at big runs. I'm thinking, wow, mm. is that what they were getting for four rounders? That's like British title money now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Okay, well, moving on from the white rhino, who thinks obviously if he puts his Senate shot window, he's going to get a Saudi lottery ticket, even though he's pissed Eddie Hills and Bricktop off, hasn't he, in recent years? <laughs> I mean, yeah. got, they don't want to be messed about with this turkey guy. They don't want messers involved, do they? No. You watch anybody no. who pulls out of any of them shows, right? If it's not. School duggery in the Tolta. Anybody pulling out, it's frowned upon by a minute. Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I mean, they're putting up a lot of dough, aren't they? So, yeah. you know, again, business. I mean, they might have unlimited money to throw about, but eventually the bubble's going to burst with them lot because they will want to return an investment eventually. What they're doing at the moment, they're getting their feet nice, well, getting their beaks nice and wet. They're sports washing, as everyone keeps saying in the media. You know, everybody loves them, uh, but eventually they're going to turn around and go, right, well, we, we've got our foot in the door now. Everyone's loved us. We've delivered historic fights, historic events. Now let's see a bit of uh, change for, for what we've invested. So, you know, they've got to be harsh to some fighters at some level, and I, I don't blame them, to be honest with you. Do you think that Dave needs to get off YouTube and get training? Yep, yeah. I mean, without everything else we've discussed, I think that it could have just been summed up in a sentence. He does. He needs to get off YouTube, get training, and, um, yeah, take it slow, like you just said there, Porky. You know I've what I mean? I've take said in slow. a video the other day, I said, look, take a year out. And I've been saying it for a few years. Take a year out, White Rhino. 
get yourself off social media and then come back in a year, new haircut, a new look, go get yourself a nice track, you look sharp, clean shaven, and yeah. say all the right things and get, get your sending mixed with, with uh, a local promoter. But take a year out to get your sending fantastic shape. So people look at him and think, well, he's not that old, really. He's early 30s. He's in great shape. They can, and then reinvent yourself instead of, you know, going on social media daily, doing YouTube channels, uh, interviews with big beards and this and that and ooh, slurring. Yeah. Take a year Oh, clear your head and come back a, a repackaged kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like Ryan Rhodes. Hey, sorry to interrupt there, Paul. Okay, like Ryan Rhodes did really. He Ryan come Rhodes back and he, really was... came back with Coldwell, didn't he? Bombay Day, Old Spice, yeah, Old Spice, and he didn't do him any harm. He got the old Canelo lottery ticket, didn't he? So you can do it. They just, yeah, you know, like you say, get off social media, get your ass in the gym. Get a sponsor for a year, Dave, and come back. But at this moment in time, when you're coming back and you're saying, I'm stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet, I'm eating kangaroo meat, I'm taking it serious, one last chance, I'm doing it for me kids, I'm doing it for me, for me family and all that. Look, we've heard it all before. Or off. Right, on to the next set of questions now. Here we go. Big Meech and Dubois. Turkey wants a rematch. We called it. They're going to take it. What do you think, James? Um, I was actually thinking about this today, right? Judging off the fight last week, you'd say no, wouldn't you? Well, I, I would. I'd just be like, this is totally pointless. But I want to just point out uh, uh, an encounter from last year, Liam Smith and uh, Chris Eubank Jr. It can happen. The reversals can happen. But... He needs to, Joshua, he's another one. He needs to stop with all this humility. And I mean, even when he's trying to be a gangster, he's fake, isn't it? Just keep your mouth shut, get in the gym, get with a trainer that's not glamorous, right? I mean, that's what Dubois done. Don Charles, there's no glamour about him. But he's, do you know what I mean? He seems like you're spitting sawdust sort of uh, trainer. There's no glamour. It's just all about the punches rather than the words. That's what Joshua needs to do. If he needs to go back to Tony Sims, which, I don't know, it could be a bit ill-advised given the bit of a storm in a teacup that's going on around that gym at the moment. A lot of alleged uh, behaviour, isn't there? But yeah. I'd still favour him over Ben Davison. Do you know what I mean? Do you know um, what uh, people keep going on about Joshua being this ex-gangster and bad boy and all that? Listen, anybody running around with a nine bar, nine, nine bar of weed, you're strictly a small fry. You're not a yeah. gangster. Get a key of class no. A car and then come back to me and tell me, talk to me. Oh, yeah. And you're running around with nine bars. We've got 15 year old kids running around with kilos of green. It's, you're not a gangster. Oh, yeah. If you've got a nine, no. you've bought a nine bar of green, you've sold an ounce. You've got proof you've sold an ounce on your phone. You get pulled up in a GB sponsored Mercedes, speeding through London. Copper smells it, pop boot. You've sold an ounce. You've got eight ounce in boot. You've got GB tracksuit on. Come on, you're, we're taking you. You see what I mean? That's mm -hmm. a gangster. He's just trying no. to get an extra few quid. And, and, and also, that's all that means. But the point I want to make is, if Joshua were a gangster, right, he'd have been running around with kilos, money and guns and all that. That's yeah, of course he would have done. It. So all, have done. That, all that Eddie and well, I've saved him from a life of gangsterism. Do me a favour. Robert McCracken saved Anthony Joshua. From a life, yep. and Robert Roberto McCracken actually saved his life in court. Not you, Eddie Hills. You didn't uh, even know him then. You didn't even. And that know told him. me something. Yeah, I can't remember his surname, but he's quite a big barrister. Tony something or other. He's in a lot of the Netflix documentaries, and yeah, he saved Joshua's ass. I don't know um, so name. yeah, I don't know his second name, but we'll call him Tony Macaroni. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Is it career suicide? Is it what? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Is it career suicide? Yes or no against Dubois? Depends what you want. I mean, I'm being very diplomatic this evening, really. It depends what you want out of your career. But I can't see him wanting any more money because he's got enough. If it's about legacy, then... His career suicide, yeah, because I think he'll get smashed. I yeah. don't think he's got the boxing... Yeah, I don't think he's got the boxing brain. Dubois was fantastic. He really was. 
He's not gonna he's not gonna do that against uh Usyk because Usyk, as we always say, is a maestro, isn't he? But um yeah, I just thought his his judgment, you know, his judgment at distance, the use of the jab, that jab, you might think I'm being sensational here, but it reminded me of the jab that Terence Crawford employed against Terrell Spence. Just hurt him. You know what I mean? It was powerful. It was like a right hand. And he was just cutting off the ring masterfully. I can't say. And, and Joshua, if you had a boxing brain, you're not going to be sat there in the centre ring with your hands down, are you? <laughs> you're going to be employing centre ring, doing exactly what you need to do, which is keep your hands up and, you know, be first, jab first, not not sit there with your chin hung up to dry, waiting for a right hand. Um, I just don't think... At the age of 35, you can't really teach an old dog new tricks, can you? Um, it can happen. I'm not just con- I'm not contradicting myself. It can happen because Eubank showed it against Liam Smith. But I think Eubank has got a little bit more in his uh, in his locker than Anthony Joshua has in terms of boxing ability, which might be controversial to say. Yeah, I but, that, yeah. You know. Do you know where? Uh... When Joshua had that, had his hands low and all that, you think he was trying to be like Tommy Earns with that low left and that, and you know, hands down by his sides and Naz and that. Do you think? My, um, no, no, I don't. I don't. I just think he was. He's in love with himself. He's got a bit of a narcissistic personality, uh, Joshua, and I think, you know, from from the whole. That meeting round the round the table, you know, where no one sits on a chair properly. They all sit on a chair front ways and all that. And he's there going, Oh, I'll smash the chair over your head. He thought he was he thought that he had the uh, beating of Dubois for intimidation. He's not very bright, is he, Joshua, I don't think. And I think that's all it was. I don't think he was really trying to give a certain look or trying to behave a certain way like Eubank was against Roy Jones for, uh, when he was training with Roy Jones, for example. I think he just got arrogant and thought, well, if I chase him down, if I get in his face, it don't matter whether my hands are up or down because I'm scary. I'm big meech, you know. Oh, I'm just going to lay you out. I think that's all it was, arrogance and narcissism, basically. I never really bought into all that. Uh, I'm about that life and I'm cut from their cloth. The Larry U was a big meech and... Uh... Uh, and uh, all that, I never really, I never really bought into that. That uh, the supreme team, you know, all them old fifty cent were involved with, you know, back in the day. Yeah. yeah but if people want to know about gangsters, right? Clarence Seedley, have you heard of who he is? Clarence Seedley. No, I've heard of He's that guy no. in New York. They call him the Under Black Death or something like that. They had dungeons. They were going around just torturing people in in. I think I'm not sure if it's Harlem or some area like that. Clarence Sedley. Go, go have a look on that on YouTube. That's I'll a have serious a gang, eh? I'll have a look at him, yeah, definitely. Right, okay. Uh, right. I'm thinking uh, <laughs> Dylan White and Derek, right? I keep seeing little bits of snippets and people trying to test water. Do you think they'd be brave enough to put Dylan White and Derek on as an headliner in Saudi? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's yeah, because it's the boys spending other people's money at the moment, and like I alluded to before, I don't think at this at this specific moment in time, they're not looking for a return on investment because they're still trying to do the the Saudis are still trying to do the PR job, aren't they? You know, let's get 96,000 people in at Wembley. Let's make it all fantastic. Everyone, you know, we'll, we'll bring Liam Gallagher in and everyone has a great time. They're not looking for the, the return on investment. So, they'll, you know, and let's face it, I'm an Oasis fan, but Liam Gallagher was absolute shy. If you're willing to drag Liam Gallagher out sounding like that, you're willing to put anyone in front of anyone. So, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. It's well, And, and you know, it's, it's the promoters. It's Hearn and... Uh, well, it's Hearn, isn't it? Like, it's not not Turkey who's who's gonna sort of put that on. So, if Hearn if Hearn puts it on, he's got to go through Turkey, and if Turkey says yes, then then it'll happen. But yeah, I, I do think he's got the uh, 
Eddie could sell sand to the Arabs. He is a very good sort of... He's good with his mouth, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? So I think he could he could sell it. He could sell it as a, a crossroads fight if he wanted to. Um, but yeah, he's definitely got the uh, temerity to sell that to the masses. He's he's done worse, hasn't he? Look at uh, Cleverly and Bellew. That second fight was woeful. And then he carried on selling bloody pay-per-view after that. Absolute shite. So Eddie could do anything, really. Uh, how do you see it's big freeze against Fabio White Collar Wardley? Um, I talked about this actually yesterday. Um, I think Fraser Clark wins this one because I think he's it's more of a it's more of a no man's land fight for Big Freeze because he's the man with the Olympic pedigree and all that. If he, I think he's going to make it a ball fest. He won't want to go in again and and chance that he he won't want to get hurt because they both took a beating, didn't they? Um, if if Fraser Clark is everything that you know we should be, we should believe him to be as a bronze medalist. He should be winning the fight quite comfortably, um, and I think he's gonna he's gonna make it a ball fest. He's gonna be um, Fabio Wardley is gonna try and drag him into the trenches, and I can just see a load of hugging and holding and, and staying behind the jab. You know what I mean? He, he will do it. He will do it if he needs to. And let's face it, it's about getting the win. So. You know, he's he's not going to want that the second time round. No, I think Fraser Clark wins on points, personally. Listen, don't know about you. I've got It's Big Freeze to win. I'm team It's Big Freeze at the moment. Because yep. if you don't, if an Olympic bronze can't beat a guy coming from white collar, Houston, we've got a problem in boxing. Yep. That's how I look at it. Yep. And It's Big Freeze yep. getting any younger. He's 33 next birthday, isn't he? Yeah, it's like I say, crossroads. We're on the same page again there, aren't we? He's, you know, if he loses that fight, he's in no man's land, isn't he? Yeah. So he's going to go out there and give a performance. And I don't mean a performance in the sense of, oh, let's make it really, really exciting. I mean a performance to get the W because then he can move on. He can then say, well, the boogeyman's behind me. Let's see what else is in front of me. Maybe we'll see him against Dave Allen. We'll probably see it loser against Dave Allen, hopefully. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, I'm going to throw a name at you. Lawrence Acoli to fight the winner of its big freeze and uh, Fabio White Collar Wardley. Because Lawrence is not getting no PR, is he? No. Um, well, it, it depends. If, if Joe Gallagher's bolstered uh, the sort of style um, that he won the WBC Bridgerweight title with and, and just made it a bit stronger and and just made him more of a more of a puncher and more entertaining than you know Lawrence Acoli's another Olympian, isn't he? So I would uh, I'd fancy him to do Wardley, but yeah. again, if Clark can, yeah, I do, yeah. But you know, Clark Clark is a proficient boxer. I mean, we've seen it uh, against lower level opposition. Um, I can't. Well, in fact, Acoli could probably be. Uh, uh, and I'm sitting on the fence with this one, just because. Um, it always reverts to type, won't he? And hold and spoil if he needs to. And I think that I don't think Fraser Clark would be comfortable with that actually. So I actually think <laughs> I've flitted between two viewpoints in about a minute. But yeah, maybe Akoli could do them both because yeah, if he's aggressive, which he can be, he's shown he can be. He's shown it uh, with McGuigan uh, before as well. Then. You know, fire meets fire with uh, Fabio Wardley, and he should have the boxing skills behind him to to back it up. If that's not going his way, then he can just hug and hold and and do the Henry Akin one day impression that we all know about. So, you know, and and both ways have been shown to be successful. So, yeah, I think he could be both of them. To be honest with you. Okay, Jack Massey don't get much PR, does he? No, but he's uh he's looking. He's looking ready. I've seen something on um, on Facebook. I think it was, yeah, yesterday. Like, just I mean, it's only a photo, but yeah, I'll tell you what. He's shredded. He's put in every like single. He's what? Sorry. I like Jack Massey. He stood up to Big Ron. Not many people do. 
No. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I like him because he was connected with Bobby Rimmer, weren't he? And Bobby's a friend of mine. So, you know, by default. And yeah, I mean, he's he's done well, hasn't he? He's, um, I mean, he's been winning that IBO title. You know, he's he's gone against sort of what people would expect of him. So good luck to him. I think uh, Opatai is a bit of a killer, personally. I think Opatai will, will take him out, but I would love to be proved wrong. OK, you want to go on to part two, kid? Yeah, certainly. See you in a bit. All right. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. I hope you enjoyed part one with James. Fantastic addition to the commission. Uh, when I get time, I'll send Cameron an email and we'll, uh, we'll get some new pictures put on with new commission. and uh, Out with the old, in with the new. So, Bernsey, Adam, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to wield the act. Pop, pop, bang. For those of you that like sport and maybe other topics, Porky's International is our sister channel. Go and subscribe now by order of the pork.